<laughs> Take us through that finish, man. Big left to drop him, and then obviously kind of just vintage you once it, once you got to the mat. Uh, yeah, I mean, Trevin was really hard to hit, man. I, just, there's nothing I could say. I, I felt I felt really good. I saw everything that uh, that he was throwing. I just could not quite get close enough to really land anything clean. Uh, and I didn't want to like overly expose myself, so uh, I, I'm, I'm a finisher. I'm one of those. I, I want to finish guys, so I had. I feel like I feel like I was winning the fight, but I knew it was really close. I still had that in, uh, sense of urgency in the third round. To say, hey, like, man, let's go in there and get a finish. Let's either get on the ground, get the takedown, see what happens. Uh, started kind of timing his counter a little bit, and uh, kind of looked at that left hand over the shoulder and put him on his butt. Thought about stepping in for the knockout, but. Uh, and got a nasty guillotine. It was there, jumped in on it, and, uh, and I felt really good with the, the, the grip. You felt like you were winning, but that, that seems to be like an inherent bias that you guys have towards yourselves. What were the Absolutely. what were the coaches telling you after the second round? Oh, uh, they knew it was really close. Yeah, they, I mean, same thing. They were like, like, you know, obviously we're, we're always thinking we're winning. I mean, I thought uh, I had, I was holding the center very well, uh, hold the, you know, anytime we're against the cage, I land some hard body shots. Thought I was landing the harder punches and the harder shots, uh, a couple good kicks. But uh, we knew it was close. I mean, you never know what these judges are looking for. So obviously, I'm still going to have a sense of urgency to go in there and try to finish this fight. I'm not going to wait for the judges. This is the, um, your second straight win at 185, right? So I mean, how has uh, the difference been for you being in this division? And, and can, you, can you feel it on fight night, both of these two wins? Uh, yeah, I definitely I feel much better at middleweight. Um, you know, the whole, the whole fight camp, Everything is about making weight at welterweight. It's it's miserable. It's it's not fun. I it, you know I, I feel like I'm really good. I don't know. Like even when I get in there for fight night, it's not fully me. You know I'm still trying. I'm still recovering from the weight cut. It's just it. I feel sluggish. I feel slow. I, I feel big and strong in there, but like I just don't feel like I got the speed with some of those smaller guys. So uh, I feel like now at welter. At, I mean sorry middleweight. I mean, I feel good. I've got, I've got the speed. I've got the power. I, you know, I've, I've got the strength in, uh, in the wrestling. I just, uh, I feel like you're, you're seeing a little bit more uh, well rounded me. The actual, uh, pretty much all my potential. And uh, now that I'm kind of getting my feet wet, feel kind of good, making sure that you know there wasn't like a huge power or strength, you know, thing. Like, I feel like now I can start letting myself go. So I'm really excited for my future now. Your third um, two fight streak in the UFC. You've never had three in a row. Not to put the pressure on you, but. <laughs> but uh, I mean, how do you feel now heading into the next one? And, and do you think that maybe um, middleweight is all the difference that you needed to, to get a three-bite streak here? It could be. I mean, uh, I don't ever think about that stuff like, oh, I've got two. Let's get past this. You know, let's get that third one. I mean, I've, I've won 10 in a row. I've lost a couple in a row. Like, I've been in this game a long time. Um, obviously, the more you win, the tougher the opponents are. So... Uh, I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna do me, and uh, I have a I have a feeling in middleweight to be hard to, it's gonna be hard to beat me. Um, I'm just I've got too many tools to win uh, on the ground, on the stand up. So uh, I feel really good. Obviously, uh, you're a little banged up tonight, so you might want some time off. But what are your thoughts on the time frame for when you might want to come back? Uh, I mean, as soon as this cut gets cleared, you know, I'm, I'm I'll be in the gym immediately. I mean, you know, I own a gym, got coach. I'm I'm in there all the time already. So. Uh, as soon as I, I get this cut cleared off and uh, I don't know, talk to the management team, see, but I, my, my problem with uh, welterweight was I always had to have like a full blown camp to make weight. It was the same thing. I had to, I couldn't really take short notice fights and all until I got to the UFC, I was busy all the time. I was always fighting. Now I know I'm getting older, but uh, I'm thinking now at middleweight, I can kind of be a little more active and I really like to, I mean, your, your timing stays a little bit more on point, stay a little sharp. So. Uh, you know, let's get past this thing and uh, let's get back in there and, and have some fun. You're originally from Texas? Uh, I was born in Irving, born in Irving, but uh, I moved to uh, Springfield, Missouri very, very young. And so, I mean, Missouri is my home state for sure. Is there any interest in the San Antonio card then? Or? I, I love San Antonio. It was fun. I uh, had a uh, vacation there. I've got, I do have quite a bit of family in Texas, uh, South Texas and up by Dallas too. So, uh, I mean, if the timing works out, sign me up. I'm in. Talk a little about Trevin. I mean, I know you said coming in, you respected him, especially taking the time off as a police officer. Absolutely. And you don't seem like a guy who needs a grudge to go out and fight. No, no. I, actually, I'd much rather uh, fight someone I respect. Uh, this is very much of a sport to me. Um, it has nothing to do with, you know, bad upbringings and all this stuff. So I am, uh, I love this sport so much. So whenever people don't treat it like a sport, it kind of rubs me wrong a little bit. So when I get those appointment, uh, those opponents that are very respectful, uh, they're, they're athletes, they're in here for the sport and the competition. That's what I want to face, that's what I want. And uh, Trevin was that, man. Like I said, tons of respect to him. Uh, 
uh, have a, being a huge prospect, and he is two and zero in the UFC, and it takes a little break, goes off, joins Police Academy. Uh, I am very, very pro law enforcement. I, uh, I don't know, so I have tons of respect for him, you know. And then, you know, I'm a new father myself. He's the same thing. So I have nothing but respect for the man. Uh, but we're in there. We're fighting. You know, nothing changes. I'm still gonna punch you in the face just as hard as I, you know, if I like you or not. So uh, I, I'd much rather uh, enjoy the octagon with somebody, put on a good show, and then uh, I'm not going to lose. Have mutual respect for the person. It looked like you had to readjust that choke a little in there. Was there a mm -hmm. moment where you thought, ah, oh, he might, uh, he might slip out? There was a moment where I was nervous. There was a moment where I thought about bailing on the guillotine and get back on top and go to a Dars. So I had, a, I had it. I thought it was really tight. And then I was like, man, this kid's tough. Never been beat before. He's gonna go out. He's gonna go on the shield. He's gonna go unconscious. Uh, and then I started losing it. And then I realized there was a minute left. I thought we were a pretty short time. And I realized there was over a minute. I was like, man, I don't want to end this round on my back. So I tried to elevate him a little bit so I can get my hips out. And I was gonna do a Dars. And uh, he kind of shut it down. But when he did that, I sunk the guillotine even a little bit deeper. And at that point, I knew it was super, super tight. And, uh, and he was forced to tap. So. Good call in the end. We've had at least four finishes so far tonight. I know, uh, it's crazy. I guess that bonus is a bit of a toss-up. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've, I've fell short from bonuses multiple, multiple times. Five of the night bonuses, some finishing bonuses. Uh, if I get it, great. I mean, I, I feel like I've been 0-1 for a while, but uh, if not, hopefully one of my teammates get it. I got plenty of them on the card, so, uh, you know, it's, it's whatever. And just check the scorecards, by the way. You, you were up 2 nothing on one, and it was yeah. even on the other two. Okay. So there well, you have it. Cool. Yeah, I knew yeah. I knew it was close. I yeah. thought I was winning, but uh, I said, and I was winning the third round. So we're gonna get the victory no matter what. How does it feel to give a talented prospect their first loss? It feels good. It definitely feels good. I've fought a lot of undefeated guys in my life and my career. I've been in this sport a long time. So uh, uh, whenever when you when you haven't been beaten, you just have this like false sense of of confidence that you, you're unbeatable, and uh, it, it takes a special person to take that away from you. Um, you know, everybody, some people get that in your mind, like, oh, this guy's never been beaten. I don't know what I can beat, you know, if I can do it. And I feel like I've been that person a lot in my career where, uh, you know, they step up and they're going to get me regardless. I don't care if you're undefeated or if you're, you know, 35 and 35. You know, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to treat you the same. I'm going to put my game plan in and try to finish you. Uh, but I will say that most undefeated guys are a little bit harder to finish. They just kind of have that, that arrogance about themselves. So, not just beating them, but finishing them. Uh, that I felt really good with. Uh, Trevin's got a bright future for sure. But uh, yeah, it's just kind of nice. I, I remember my first loss. It's something that you'll never forget. So yeah. it's kind of, kind of a little extra special, I guess, being the first one. You dropped him with a beautiful overhand left, and then jumped on the guillotine. Of course, you said you readjusted it. Mm -hmm. Got it. How does it feel to add another submission when to your Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt resume? Uh, I, I love submissions. Uh, it, I don't know. <laughs> I, I know I have tons of power, and I'm like dropping on myself. Like, oh, like are you a knockout guy? I'm like, I got good, I got good striking, I got good power, but you know, I either drop and jump on a submission. Maybe next time I just need to like just keep punching in the face or something. But uh, uh, man, some guys recover really quick, and whenever I just see the neck sitting there, I just I pounce on it. So uh, yeah, I mean, you know, that's the cool thing about uh, having some good power. You know, I can hurt people. I could put, I could drop them instead of the takedown, then I can just, uh, I can jump on the submission. So knowing that I can, I can finish fights in, in multiple different ways definitely helps. But uh, so I have no submission, I'm good. I'm happy with it.